Google Studio can create amazing apps, but the problem always tends to be the same. If you refresh the page, all of your data disappears, files get lost, form submissions go nowhere, and you can't really share your progress with anyone. And you could set up a backend, but if you're a beginner, it's still quite hard to do, even with simple tools like Firebase, which is why I'm making this video. Today, I'll share with you six simple hacks of how to make your apps go from just front-end toys into fully functional tools for your business, and all of them require just one prompt with no backend setup needed. I'll show you how to save your data in your browser's database so you can come back to it anytime, how to store your images and files so they stay there even if you refresh the page, configure form submissions so that website Gemini created for you is actually useful, and we'll even get into things like creating shareable links for your notes so anyone can open them with your link, and implementing site-wide search so you can find stuff even if you misspelt it or it's buried somewhere deep inside your documents. But before we start, my goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of next year. So if you enjoy simple hacks like these, make sure to subscribe to this channel and let's get right into the video. Now, before we get into building anything, I've created a free guide for this video that you can get in the description. So you can just copy and paste the prompts that I used and follow the simple setup steps. So make sure to get it before you start. I have just built this custom productivity app where I have everything in one place, my tasks, my notes, my meetings. It's absolutely beautiful until I refresh the page and everything goes, so it's not useful to me at all. And if I were to configure a backend, I'd need authentication, a database security rules. So the first hack will show you how you can skip all that by just saving your data locally into your browser's native database called IndexedDB. It can hold over 100 megabytes of data at a time and everything will stay there until you purposefully decide to clear cache, and all you need is just this one simple prompt. Save all user input, tasks, notes, meetings, and data in them into the user's index DB in the browser, and just send it in. Once that's done, you're just going to click on the rocket icon and deploy your app to Cloud Run. Now, I taught you exactly how to do that step by step in my previous video, so you can just go ahead and watch it if you've never done that before. And once it's done, just go to your link and you're going to add a bunch of test data to see if it works. I'm going to add a couple of tasks. I'm going to say script Google AI Studio video, create video thumbnail. And then I'm going to go to notes and I'm going to add a note right here. I'm going to say script and this is my script in the content. And I'm also going to add a meeting with a client called Jessica and paste in my meeting link. And now to test if it actually worked, you're going to right click anywhere on the screen and go to inspect. And in application tab, you'll see something called IndexedDB. And if you open it, you'll see your app inside it and a bunch of folders. So the first one I have is meetings. And if I go ahead and open the value right here, you'll see the meeting that I've just added. I've got the title, the link, the meeting time. If I go to notes, here's my note. So if I open it, I've got the content, the title ID when it was updated at. And in tasks, we get all the two tasks that I've just added. So it's working great. Remember, you can save over 100 megabytes of data in this local database, so you can create fully functional systems with it. But what happens if you'd like to save images? Well, that's where our second life hack comes in. I have this Nano Banana powered background removal app. I can just upload any image right here and it will process it and remove the background using Gemini. I can download this image, but wouldn't it be amazing to save all my past generations in history? Well, to do this, you can use a simple hosting, something like ImageBB with a super simple API. Your app will automatically upload all generated images to this hosting and it will return a link to us. We'll then store this link in our IndexedDB database so we can display your image in the UI and you can download it at any time. And all of your images are going to be saved in unlisted mode. So that means they're only accessible with the link, kind of like a Google Drive image you share with someone. The first thing you're going to do here is just head over to ImageBB and create a free account. And then you're going to head over to About and choose API. And all you need to do here is just copy your API key and you're ready to prompt. I'm just going to say, once a user removes background from my image, upload it to ImageBB API. And I'm going to provide it with an endpoint. You can copy it in my guide. And then I'm just going to put in the API key. When the upload is finished, save the returned image URL and timestamp in IndexedDB and show all past generations. On upload, fetch all saved URLs from IndexedDB and display previous generations. Under each image, add a copy link button so I can share it. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this prompt into my Google AI Studio app and send it in. And once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy it, paste any image right here and remove the background. And now when I go to gallery, the image should appear right here. And if I hover over it, you'll see this prompt to copy the link. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And now when I paste this link in any browser tab, my image appears right here and I can save it. Now in our app, I'm just gonna head over to inspect. And now in IndexedDB, you should see the image that you've just generated with the image URL hosted on ImageBB. So even if you refresh the page, it will stay here and you can download it at any time. Now we've just figured out how to host images, but what happens if your app generates any other type of file, like a PDF, an audio or video? Well, in this case, we're going to use a cloud storage service called GoFile, and the setup is going to be super similar. I just have this AI dubbing app that is absolutely incredible. My friend and I were testing it out yesterday. We recorded this simple podcast about pugs. I can now just upload it right here. And the first thing it's going to do is just transcribe our audio and it identified the speakers perfectly. Now in production settings, I can choose which language I'd like to translate it to and choose the voices I'd like to dub us with and then just click generate audio. And there it is. It just translated our podcast to Spanish with two different voices, which is absolutely incredible. Now to save the generation, all I have to do is just go to go file and create a free account. And now next to my email, I'm going to hit on the downward arrow and go to my profile. Now here, I'm just going to scroll down to find my account token. And I'm just going to copy it just like the image BB API key. Now in the prompt, I'm just gonna say, automatically upload the audio user uploads to GoFile. When dumped audio is generated, upload it to GoFile as well. Now for each audio, you're going to save the original audio link, titles, transcript, and dubbed audio in IndexedDB dynamically, so the users can come back to see their progress and history. And I'm just going to paste in first my API token right here, and then the GoFile documentation. You can copy all of that in my free guide. Now I'm just going to paste this prompt into Google AI Studio. Now once that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and deploy our app. And now in the deployed app, I'll upload a Park podcast again. Now I'm just going to click save and finish. And you'll see that our dubbed audio now appears in history and I can play it directly from here. Now if I go to inspect, in the application tab in IndexedDB, you should see the audio you've just generated. As you can see, we've got the dubbed audio URL and the original Go file URL right here. So now if I wanted to dub this audio into more languages later, I could just close this tab and come back to it at any time, which is amazing. We're now at a point where Gemini can generate absolutely stunning websites for your business. And you can even add custom images and icons by just hosting them somewhere like on ImageBB and just feeding Gemini a bunch of links and it's going to embed them in the UI. But there's one huge problem. When your client goes ahead and fills out your contact form, it goes nowhere so you can't reach out to them, which makes your website absolutely useless. The easiest work around it is by using Google Forms API. Now we're not actually going to embed the ugly forms on our website, we're going to use our own. We're just going to use the API to receive the full submissions and save them in Google Sheets. So to do this, just head over to Google Forms and click to create a blank form. Now here you're just going to ask Gemini to create a form with the same fields you have on your Google AI Studio website. So in my case, it's going to be just name and email. So I'm gonna say simple contact form, name and email and click create. Now you shouldn't worry about the title or the field names. It doesn't really matter. All you need is just the matching fields. And once that's done, you're gonna have to publish it. So go ahead and click publish. Now make sure to make it live for anyone to see. So you're going to select anyone with the link, click done, and now you're just going to go ahead and publish it. Once your form is published, you're just gonna go ahead and copy the link it generates and paste it in your prompt. And what I want you to do here is just to remove this part of the URL, the one that starts with the view form, just going to remove it. And you're going to replace it with this exact text called form response. You'll find the steps in my free guide. Now, once that's done, you'll also need the IDs of the actual fields. So to do this, head back to your form and click on the three dots. And here you're going to select pre-fill form. Now to get the form IDs, just going to enter absolutely any credentials right here, it doesn't matter, and click get link. Now again, paste this link in your form and you're just going to extract your form values. So you'll see something called entry dot plus a number, and then it says equals Michael. This is going to be our name. And we also have the same thing for our email right here. It says entry dot plus an ID and equals our email. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in right here. 
Now go ahead and remove this pre-fill URL. We don't need it and we're ready to create a prompt. Above our form response URL, I'm just gonna say, when a user submits any form on the website, send a post request to Google Forms, and I'm going to say post URL. And now above the entry IDs, I'm just gonna say request body, and that's your prompt. Just copy it and paste it in your Google AI Studio app. Once that's done, let's go ahead and test it out. I'm just going to fill out the contact form with my credentials and send it right here. As you can see, it says sent successfully. Now in our Google Form, if I go to responses, my response appears right here, so it's working perfectly. Now we've just figured out how to make your apps fully functional using IndexedDB. So say you've just went ahead and created something like this invoice app. You just upload your invoices in any format, AI processes them and extracts financial data, and then shows charts and graphs based on it. Now, if you just ask the code assistant to add the search bar, it's not really fully functional. So say I have this invoice to Acme Corp for consulting services. So if I go ahead and just type consulting into the search bar, nothing really pops up. So let's go ahead and fix this with just one prompt. I'm going to ask Gemini to just implement fuzzy search using your library called Fuse.js and just send it in. So now when I go ahead and type consulting, only the consulting invoices show up right here. And I can also go ahead and misspell something. So say I'm searching for an invoice for Black Mesa Research. So I'm just going to intentionally misspell it. I would say black without an A. And as you can see, it also pops up. This library is amazing for searching stuff on your website. Your app can now save any data in your browser's database, but what happens if you want to open it from another device or share it with a colleague? Well, this is the problem with no backend apps. You really can't. They're just going to see a blank app. So the next life hack is going to help you fix this. So say in the first app we built today, I want to share this script note with my colleague. So what I can do is use something called LZ string library to take the title and content and encode it and add it to the URL, creating kind of like a shareable link any user can open to view my node. So this is going to be my prompt. I'm going to say add a share button inside notes. When it's clicked, use LZ string library to compress the text and title user currently has, create a shareable link with the compressed string. When a user opens the shared link URL, decompress the title and text from the string and display the node title and text. And I'm also going to say for the new user, add the new node to IndexedDB. I'm gonna go ahead and send this in. Now in the deployed app, I'm gonna go ahead and open my note right here and you'll see that the share button was just added. I'm gonna go ahead and click it. As you can see, it shows that the link was just copied. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it in an incognito tab. And now this user is also able to see my note right here. Now the only problem with this hack is I don't recommend you use it with very long documents. So if I go ahead and add a long note right here and just add a bunch of text and save it, I'm gonna go ahead and click share on this note and you'll see what the link looks like. It's super long and it looks kind of unprofessional and eventually you're going to hit a limit. So only use it for small things like a list of tasks or meetings. So that's for today's video. I'm currently in process of making part two of this video, showing you simple hacks you can use to elevate your Google AI Studio apps. So if that's a feature or an app you'd like to see me build, make sure to comment it down below. Until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.